Hello everyone. I'm Shalini. We are here today at Baby Destination to talk about the physical and emotional changes during pregnancy. We're doing this with Prega News and we have with us today Dr. Namrata Sandhu. Hi. From the Army Institute of Medical Sciences. Welcome doctor. It's a pleasure to have you here Thank again. Thank you. It's my pleasure too. So we keep getting a lot of questions around changes that happen during pregnancy, physical, emotional. We have spoken to a lot of mums in our community and uh, we actually have with us uh, Deva who is a mother of a two and a half year old girl and Richa who has a four year old son. We have uh, with, uh, with us them and they are going to share their experiences. So let's hear them. Sure. Hello Shalini. Mujhe yaad hai when I was pregnant, I was facing lot of breathlessness. Legs mein bhi pain rehta tha, lot of loss of appetite. So I would like to know about these things. Hi Shalini, hi doctor. So at the time of my pregnancy, I used to have a lot of heartburn and acidity, anything that I ate and I also had a lot of pigmentation like here and also on my hands, on my back. So I would like to know more about it. That's true. All these problems are very, very relatable problems. So pregnancy is a beautiful feeling, but it comes with a lot of changes. What do you have to say, doctor? Yes, so I do feel that pregnancy is a beautiful experience for any mother. However, it's also a life changing event because there are a lot of physical and emotional changes that accompany it. Right. So um, only if the women are aware of these physical and the emotional changes which happen in their bodies, I think they can deal with it better. Mm -hmm. And they'll be able to make, preg uh, I think pregnancy would be a better experience for them. Right, right, right. If is they're it, aware of Is it also true that the changes are mostly in the first trimester uh, as soon as you discover that you're pregnant? Uh, yes, so uh, I think the changes keep happening in your body. So mm -hmm. the changes actually start uh, a little before that. Okay. And it also, uh, but since especially for a mother who's pregnant for the first time, mm -hmm. she's never experienced any of those symptoms before. So the first, pre and also the certain uh, first trimester changes are very disturbing. For example, the nausea and the vomiting that accompany the pregnancy. A lady is not used to that. Suddenly, you know, she's she's unable to eat because of the vomiting. Some women experience it. So nausea is one symptom I think which about eighty-five to ninety percent of women experience. Okay. Vomiting maybe about forty-five to fifty percent of women experience. But certain symptoms are very disturbing, which a woman is not used to it. So maybe she feels that in the first trimester, you know, it's the most uh, disturbing period. <laughs> but you know, every trimester has its own problems. Right. 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 I don't want to make pregnancy sound like a problematic state. It's actually a physiological condition. There's nothing wrong with you. So we don't even, and that's one thing I really like about being an obstetrician because you're seeing, you're not seeing a patient, you're not uh, seeing, uh, there's nothing wrong with you. It's right. a normal physiological state. So you, and in fact, you know, you give life to a mother. So it's a very, very beautiful and satisfying experience as a doctor too. True. What are the what are the common changes like you mentioned that <coughs> nausea, vomiting, these yes. are there. What about constipation, acidity, heartburn? So, yes. So there are a lot of complaints uh, sometimes uh, that a woman comes to us with. So uh, like heartburn, you mentioned, like you know, you're one of the uh, girls in the right. video also mentioned about right. it. So heartburn is something that's really common in the uh, during pregnancy. What happens is because of the hormone of pregnancy, the hormones are there in the pregnancy like progesterone, it, rela it, causes, it causes a relaxation of the gastroesophageal sphincter which causes acid reflux, okay. which causes your heartburn. Okay. Now okay. Uh, we have antacids, we have medications which can be given to the patients to treat it. But other than that, you know, if women take simple precautions like uh, try and eat small frequent meals, mm -hmm. the meals should be low in fat and avoid spicy food okay and if they uh, try and uh, you know to avoid sleeping right after they have a meal like at least there should be a gap of two hours mm -hmm. and when they're sleeping if they keep uh, uh, you know it, if the their position is slightly uh, you know if they, keep, uh, they put pillow behind their back if they keep themselves slightly propped up okay you okay, know okay. as not to lie supine but just keep themselves slightly propped up you mean that a helps. little elevated elevated yes okay, okay. so that kind of helps Okay, okay. You know, so all of these, they, you know, adhere to these uh, uh, 
uh, little uh, words of advice that I've given them. So if you try and uh, follow these, uh, this, if you follow this advice, it's much better, and you'll be relieved. Okay, so you you're saying burn. that if I'm if I'm sleeping, so मुझे flat नहीं लेटना चाहिए. Flat नहीं लेटना चाहिए. मुझे एक pillow या अगर आप एक pillow नीचे रख लेंगे. And you keep yourself a little propped up, so it 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 is reduced. It's much reduced. So heartburn, acidity, heartburn, acidity. Yes. They try not to sleep immediately. If you just had your meal, don't sleep immediately after you've mm. had your meal. So take a gap. You should keep a gap of at least two hours. Which is also so, true for like. Uh, which is true anyway. Yes. Anyway, true. right, right. Okay, okay. I've also heard that a lot of women face leg pain. Like uh, Deva has also mentioned. Uh, swelling, swelling, and yes. even something related to veins. I think uh, is varicose veins. Right. So yes. what? Uh, what's that? So uh, actually, a uh, lot of women sometimes. So they're, they're all different complaints. Some women feel uh, lethargic, and they feel very lazy during hmm. pregnancy, hmm. that and sleepy during pregnancy. Hmm. So progesterone also has a you know sleep inducing effect on us. So because okay. of which. थोड़ा सा आपको सुस्त फील हो सकता है प्रेगनेंसी के दौरान एंड दी अदर थिंग इज इट यू नो वॉट यू टॉक स्पोक अबाउट वेरिकोज वेन्स दैट ऑल्सो इज अ प्रॉब्लम सो वेरिकोज वेन्स वॉट हैपन्स इज नाउ देर आर सर्टन वैल्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन आर वेन्स एंड स्पेशली द वेन्स इन द लेग्स हैव वैल्स विच आर Uh, you know, which allow f- which are unidirectional. It's going okay. to get a little technical, so I'm not going to too much right, detail. Right, right. But what happens is because of the hormones of pregnancy, these valves become a little relaxed. Okay. And also during pregnancy, as the blood volume increases and the weight of the baby, obviously because of the weight of the baby, these valves sometimes get damaged, and there is pooling of blood behind these veins, which is okay. which is seen as those bumps and the slightish bluish discoloration mm-hmm. you must have seen around the legs. Which is known as varicose veins. Okay, so is that something for which you should see a doctor or? So, us me you don't have to. Ah, बहुत ज़्यादा घबराने की ज़रूरत नहीं है. तो उसमें आप you can keep your legs a little elevated. Again, okay, yeah. Elevated. Again, elevation of leg helps. Mm-hmm. Rest helps. Mm-hmm. But if it is too much, and if you feel you must show it to a doctor, and uh, surgical treatment is the final answer for it. Okay. But if that is, is that is if it crosses a certain stage, right? Right. right. So if initial okay. stages, you know, leg elevation, bed rest, that helps. That helps. And yes. what about? But you have to show yourself to a doctor for sure. sure. How about swelling? Uh, is that normal? Yes. Yeah. So there's something known as physiological edema of pregnancy, and there's something known as pathological edema of pregnancy. Okay. So physiological edema is normal, which happens basically because if if you st- stand for for a number of for a you know the entire day or for long hours, mm-hmm. if you have a walk, if you have a job that makes you like you know for which you have to be on your toes for long periods of time, right? Then. Towards the end of the day, you'll notice that there's a bit of swelling on your legs. Okay. So that uh, is normal. So mm-hmm. that is the reason rest is very very important. So every pregnant lady should sleep for at least eight hours in the af- in at night and two hours in the afternoon. That's mm-hmm. the kind of rest you need. And uh, but you know if somebody's having swelling, uh, it could be pathological as well. So you need to get your blood pressure checked. Okay. Okay. And once you know that you know you don't have any of those ailments, your blood pressure is normal, and there is no other accompanying symptom, mm-hmm. then you know that it's normal. Okay. And, uh, and will go eventually. Well, it will go away. Yes. Okay. So uh, another thing about physiological edema is, which is normal, that after a night's a good night's rest, it will not be there in the morning. Oh. So it is not there in the morning, and it will develop as the day progresses. Okay, so that's physiological edema, right? right as right. compared to pathological, which will be which will be more seen in the dependent parts of your body, and you know, so it will it will not go away. So, so are these things also genetic by some chance? Edema is not <laughs> okay, but certain things like uh, you know your stretch marks, okay, which women have a genetic predisposition to it. Okay, for that matter, even uh, nausea and vomiting in pregnancy. So, hmm. uh, hyperemesis gravidarum is also sometimes if your if your mother has had it or your sister had it, there's a predisposition. You have increased predisposition of having it. Okay, during okay, pregnancy. Okay. And uh, urination, I think that's also one of the questions that we keep hearing from mums: excessive urination yes. during pregnancy. So, so excessive urination <coughs> during pregnancy is generally seen in the first trimester, in the first three months. Mm-hmm. Why? Because if you realize that uh, it's because of the pressure of the uh, uh, pressure that the uterus puts on the bladder, which is normal, which is, which is no because of the enlarging size as right. the uterus. Si- uterine size enlarges, puts pressure on the bladder because of which you have increased urge to pee. Okay. So okay. once it becomes an abdominal organ, 
it becomes less then again so women have this problem more so in the first trimester and then towards the end that's when the head is pressing on the starts to okay, press on the bladder okay okay so so those are the two two times basically when the women has an increased urge okay. and uh, so this is increased urinary frequency the urge to pass urine is normal but if you have uh, dysuria or painful urination mm-hmm. or burning mm-hmm. burning during your urination that is a symptom that needs to be uh, shown to a shown doctor. to a doctor okay okay and as it is every time in the first visit we always do, do a urine examination a urine routine and culture because there is a condition which is known as asymptomatic bacteriuria where you may not have any symptoms mm-hmm. so a lady will not have any complaints aapko kuch nahi pata chalega there will be no complaints that you go to the doctor with but once you get a urine culture done probably it could be uh, there would be a growth of some organism that is seen oh. and that needs to be treated okay, okay okay so i just want women to be aware that there is a condition known as asymptomatic bacteriuria which basically means asymptomatic no symptoms mm-hmm. so she will lady will not have any symptoms so you're trying to say that it is it is a good idea to uh, regularly see a doctor that is a very good idea in fact <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, so a pregnancy should be monitored obviously and right. you know you have to have how med- frequently how s- often should you see a doctor so yeah, the latest who model uh, world health organization the model that they have given us is you know so minimum of eight visits should be there hmm. for every pregnant woman okay meaning thereby once a month uh, is something uh, like well, yeah so initially in the first three months you should have minimum of one visit in the first three months okay then around the 20th week another visit then around the 26th week then 30th week okay. then um, and so on you know mm-hmm. so 30th week 34 36 and then so okay. on so eight but generally what we do is we advise um, you know patients the first time you're pregnant you'll always obviously go and show yourself to a doctor <laughs> right and uh, uh, one thing I, which is very important is whenever a lady is pregnant and you know women see that um, so i'm digressing a little bit from the topic but then whenever a lady sees two lines on the upt kit they're very excited right most women are excited and uh, but some of them who uh, i mean the what, what i wanted to say was very important to go and get get an ultrasound done by a gynecologist to make sure it's an intrauterine pregnancy okay okay so what does that women mean are not aware of ectopic pregnancies mm-hmm. which are pregnancies which happen in the tube and not in the uterus right so which right. could be an emergency situation for them so for that you should go for an ultrasound after you see the purple after the, you see the two lines the two lines. lines yeah so okay okay yeah. so that's one thing i wanted to tell because a lot of women uh, take mtb pills also without getting an ultrasound done mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay which okay. can be catastrophic in a lot of situations if it turns out to be an ectopic pregnancy and okay. you will you can never find that out find without an ultrasound without an ultrasound okay okay that's pretty useful yes how about emotional changes like things like mood swings i'm getting angry is this true or is this just an excuse <laughs> is this psychological uh so uh a lot of women experience mood changes mood swings during pregnancy which is normal basically because of the uh, physical stresses during pregnancy mm-hmm. your fatigue the change in the metabolism and also the hormones of pregnancy estrogen mm-hmm. progesterone True. they basically cause release of certain neurotransmitters which are again chemicals which control your mood swings right so because of any alteration in the hormones you could have so these women women pregnant women have a bit of mood swings you know which mm-hmm. is normal mm-hmm. but so the only way to deal with it is to chill and not take too much stress right probably mm-hmm. sleep properly mm-hmm. each at right time true uh, get a good night sleep go for a walk watch a movie eat a balanced diet um, drink plenty of water uh, be active by active i mean you know have uh, i mean do your moderate amount of physical activity whatever is mm-hmm. whatever is uh, whatever you like but if these symptoms persist for more than 2 weeks or if you feel that you know you're having a lot of trouble sleeping you're getting really anxious for no reason or there's a change in your dietary pattern you don't feel like eating at all you're getting into fights hmm. for no reason then you must go and see yourself go go, go show yourself to a doctor a gynecologist yes and okay. they will refer you to if they feel that it's really serious right but then such uh, then you need to really show yourself to a Doctor. you need help hmm. yes so we have a lot of questions coming in we'll actually take just two or three 
the first question is constipation is a common problem what can we do for that so we've already covered that question yes but are I there any i told to you what to do for it for yeah so are there any yes. remedies so constipation so everything in pregnancy is to be blamed on the hormone progesterone <laughs> because it kind of decreases your uh, motility gastric motility right. yes so basically what you need to do is drink plenty of fluids mm -hmm. have a eat a high fiber diet you know so your diet should be high in fiber mm -hmm. and uh, eat a balanced diet small frequent meals okay. and maintain a exercise maintain your uh, exercise routine whatever you do so go for walks so a, a healthy lifestyle will take care of most of it and if you still if it still persists then we have medicines right you, they'll come they'll show to a doctor and we'll give them right medicines okay. the second question is uh, does the skin color also change during pregnancy uh, pigmentation yes. and all of that so uh, you uh, I think all pregnant women must have noticed, uh, a l you know. So th there is a melanocytic hormone which causes, which is responsible for uh, uh, linea nigra, which is a line. Sometimes women must have noticed a line right down from the umbilic, from the umbilicus to the uh, from the navel, okay, to the uh, okay, okay, uh, to the uh, lower bone down there, symphysis pubis. We okay. call it the linea nigra. So it's basically because of the melanocytic. So this is uh, a hormone which gives a bit of a pigmentation and you also have cholasma in pregnancy which is the butterfly kind of a rash which is oh. there so uh, which is uh, which is happens because of pregnancy and it goes away it goes away it goes away uh, most of the times okay okay, okay. But sometimes it may persist okay so if it persists then uh, one should see a doctor Yes, so uh, most of the times it goes away, but sometimes it stays. So then we, you can go to a dermatologist. Right, right. Okay. There are some creams which can reduce the pigmentation. Sure. The third question is, I'm not sure if that's true, but uh, the question is, is it true that women get forgetful and moody during pregnancy? Moody, yes. Moody, yes. But forgetful, no. I think just because of the, maybe sometimes it also depends on, it's very individualistic because if you're a person who takes a lot of stress in life, mm -hmm. so you could, you know, even if you're forgetting things generally, you could blame it on pregnancy. Yeah, but otherwise, that's true, that's true. Uh, pregnancy is a physiological state. There's nothing wrong with you if you're pregnant. It's, I think it's a time for you to be happy and enjoy that period of your life. That's a tip from you. <laughs> yes. I was actually about to ask uh, one last thing uh, that you want to tell our moms, ko, moms to be, jo hai unko, so that they can enjoy this period without worrying about uh, yes, all the I would like to just tell them that you know pregnancy is a as I've already mentioned it's not a diseased state you know it's a natural phenomena so you just be yourself be happy eat right sleep right and make enjoy. the most of it yeah because the baby I think I also believe that the, you're passing you, you, your state of mind will have an impact on the baby's growth and uh, development Okay. Because you know somehow you you know how you feel the baby baby's health is impacted affected, affected you know because if you take a lot of stress obviously it's going to affect the baby so I think being happy is, is the, the way to be is the way yes. to be <laughs> thank you so much doctor I think it was very very useful very informative and we hope to have you again here very soon yes. thank you moms for uh, listening to us and asking questions thank you so much.